Today I want to, to, to go with you through the book of Isaiah chapter 61. Shall see the first 10 and 11. Uh, the Bible say, I, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be rejoiced in my God. For he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom that herself with an adornment and as a pride adorned himself with her jewels. For, for us the earth brings forth it is part, as the garden causes the things that are sown in it spring forth. So the Lord God will cause righteous and praise of spring forward before all the nations. Isaiah as a prophet, he was telling how we can be greatly rejoiced in the Lord. Because the Lord God, he created us to live in this earth in joy and peace and in harmony. He created us to know that we need to celebrate the life we need to rejoice, we need to, to, to have peace, and we need to give him all the glory because he has done all these good things for us. Isaiah as a prophet is talking to the nation that I have, I, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, and my soul shall be rejoiceful in my God. As people of God, we need to have joy. We need to rejoice in, in our God because this God is a good God who, who clothed us with the coming of, of, of salvation. The salvation is a gift from God. And he gave us so that we, in our life, we can have joy. And we can have peace and we can have our great joy because God has given us the coming of salvation. We have, we are saved. We are saved through Jesus Christ. And they have covered us with the rope of the righteousness. We cannot keep the righteousness or be righteous for our own strength. It's the Lord who gives us the rope of righteousness. The, the one who covers with salvation is the one who gives us righteousness. It's the Lord. So the prophet Isaiah, he was just giving the people the word of the prophecy to know that it's only the Lord who does all these things to us. And he gave the example as the bridegroom tags himself with odd men and all the bride dons herself with her jewels. Is you Isaiah was talking about like the time you are you are bride and the bridegroom they are planning their wedding as you think to put yourself in a good suit a nice one you want to place and be decent person in that day that's your day. And the, the lady, she put a, her garment on and she put the jewelry and she put makeup and she make herself very nice and beautiful so that you see her, she's on, on from your heart. So that's how the Lord says he will do for us. He will equip us. He will make us to be people. When he looks to us, we are blessing him. We are well equipped. And they say as the, the curtain, as for as the earth bring forth its part, as the curtain cause the things that 
are sworn in it to spring forth. So the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise on spring forth before all the nations. We know there's a time we have things we plan. And as God is telling us that we plan like the garden, we plant things and there's a time of spring, you go in the garden and you see things coming up. Like in this nation, we can know the season after the other because there's a fall. Right now, the leaves are falling. We come to the place which I see all trees and the plants and grass are like dying. Everything's dead. That's a, that's a winter time. And we know that when it comes, we, see, we start seeing the grass coming up and the, 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 the leaves coming, new ones. Everybody's happy. They know this is the time of spring. The spring is coming up. The spring means there's things, new things are coming from the ground coming up and they're very beautiful. Everything looks very beautiful. Your spring. So in your life, there's a time you plan in your garden, in your area, you just plan where there's a dry land. It's, it's, it's nothing in that land, but you're planting. You're planting, trusting God. And the time God brings spring, when you go in the garden and you see the plant is coming out, that is your spring. So you are happy. My plant is coming out. So when God comes to, to your life and see there's a spring in you, you are coming up in some things. There's some things of God is raising up. God is happy. So the spring will come. It will come forward and now wish the righteous, it will cause the righteous to give the, the, the praise to the spring in the, because it's coming forward before the old nations. Because we are righteous of the Lord, when the spring comes, when things that God are planted in, in your life, when the word of God is going out, it's planting the seed of God in your life. And when the spring comes up, people of the world, they will praise God because they will see the gifts of God in your life. It will be manifested. It will be working and it's growing up. So that's how God is so good to us because he put all these things in our life because God is God. And he has a plan and he has everything for us. We lack nothing because he's in our side. And he called us with a purpose, with a reason. We say we have been learning about the children of Israel and we care a lot about them. We say there's nothing, nobody who is in this world by accident. Nobody who is in this world by the chance. You may not understand the plan of God in your life, but you have a plan. You, God has a purpose with you. You are just a unique person. And some people, they may not understand when we say you are unique. They say, I see many people like me. I see, I assemble so many people like me, even my face. I can see to so and so. I can see my body to so and so. I can see my hair is like this so and so. I can see how I walk. I see my behavior in so and so. But I want to tell you one thing. You are unique. You will never be like so. Why? Let's go in, 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 in things you can understand. When the person you think you resemble to, if we do a mistake, and they want to know who did it because you, you, you may look like your brother, you may look like your sister. Some people born twins, they look alike. But what I want to tell you a challenge is, all when even they look like, the fingerprints, they are not the same. Nobody in this world, they have the same fingerprints, which means you are unique. They will get to you 
in your fingerprints because your fingerprints will show you you are just a unique person. No one else will have your own your fingerprints. So you are just unique. It means there's something in you is unique than anyone else. Whether you born as twins and you look like you are unique. When you go to put your fingerprints down, it prints you. Not, 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 not your brother, not your sister, not, not the person you think is like you. And they will catch it so that you are a unique person. That's how you have things of God in you. You can, somebody else cannot have it. It's just only you. But if you don't recognize that I have something, you cannot be useful. You cannot be manifested. You cannot do nothing because you don't know that I have something special in me. So you just live like any other person so you can do nothing. But if you know that I'm just me and I'm unique, you will give God the glory. You will praise God. You will say, thank you, Jesus, because nobody like you. You just create me as a unique as I, I am. I'm just a person of my own character. So God loves you the way you are because he creates you. Praise the name of Jesus. So we come to know that these things we are starting and reading the word of God. It's just to give you a hint that God loves you. All of this is just the love of God. All of this just to tell you that God loves us so much. That God is in our side. And when we see in another verse, in John chapter 7, verse 37, Jesus was telling his disciples, he said, but I say, He said, all, all that the, the Father gives me will come to me, and that once who comes to me, I will, I will by no means cast them out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of, my, of him who sent me. Verse 39. This is the will of the Father who sent me that for all he has given me, I should lose not, nothing but should raise it up at the last day. Jesus was saying in his planting, in his cutting, God has given him, you and me, and as he are planned and we come in the springtime, he said, all that my father have given me, all, we all, Jesus is not going to cast nobody out. He's not going to leave you out of his plan. He's not going to cast you out because the father have given him you so that you remain in the Lord. So that the Lord being you, so that he cannot cast you out for any means. He said for any means. There's nothing can make Jesus to cast you out. He wants you because the Father have given him. And, and he said on first, that's A. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will. Jesus, when he will come from heaven to this earth, he didn't come to do his own will. He didn't come to do his own plans. He didn't want to come to please the world. He didn't want to come to show the world that I am the son of God and I want to show you who I am. He was coming in this earth with the purpose of God to do God's will. And God's will is to seek and find the lost ones. That's our God's will. 
When we go out and look for the lost ones, we are doing God's will. That's the will Jesus came to do. We are all lost. We are all sinners. We have gone astray from God. But Jesus came from heaven to do his Father's will. The Father's, the Father's will was no one to be lost. He wanted us all back to him. That's his will. His will is to see us believing in the name of Jesus. His will is to see us praising him. His will to see us to say, there's no God like you. That's God's will. God's will is to, to see us doing exactly as he said. That's God's will. So Jesus said he came from heaven to do his father's will. And he said, because that has given me, I shall lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. When God has given us to Jesus, Jesus, he don't want to lose nothing. He want to cut us. He want to help us. He want to make us to be good people. He want us to be blessing God. So that in the last day, like we are saying, we are waiting. We have had the word in the morning saying we are waiting the Lord to come back to being here. John prepared his way and we are waiting him to come back. What is coming to fulfill what he said, he will raise up to him. Those who, who, who remain in God, those who receive the Lord, nobody will be lost again. The Lord is coming back for us. That's an encouragement word to say, what I'm doing as I'm following the Lord, I'm not wasting my time. He's coming back, and he's coming back. It's not coming back to go to the cross to pay our sin. It's not coming back to get a punishment again because of what we have done after Jesus went in heaven. It's, it's coming back. It's not that Jesus is going to, 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 to kneel down and humble and pray and fast. He's not going to do that no more. He did that because of us. He did that so that he was in flesh. He did that because he was like us. But Jesus is coming back as God. As God with power. God, the, the king with power. is coming to, to raise us from the dead. Nothing would stand before God. Even the heaven we see. When Jesus comes back, it, it is not going to stand. Even the earth we see. He said everything will run from God, Jesus because of the power is coming with. And who will enjoy that power is the saints that will be with him as he's coming. We shall be with him. We shall stand in his side when he's giving the ruling, when he's touching the world, when he's touching the evil. We shall stand with him and we shall say, yes, you are doing the right thing. And we shall rejoice. And we shall see evil being punished. Because we shall be glad. Because the evil one have punished us a lot. Have put us down the sickness. Have put us down the problems. They have pressed. They have stealed many things from us. We shall be happy when we see him being punished. We shall rejoice. We shall jump up. We shall shout. Say yes, get you what you are supposed to get because you are make us to go down a lot. We shall be happy people because the Lord, our Lord, our King, our Savior, the one who paid price is coming back. So he's giving us, he's not going to lose nobody. So you just hold on in Jesus. I know the challenge is there. I know things are pressing you down. I know sickness are putting you down, you are not feeling well, you are not enjoying, you are not, every time you are in pain, but I want to assure you, that one will, ne will not be there no more. As our Lord shows up, you will be just well and peaceful and enjoy, you will never see sickness or pain or struggle no more, because the Lord is coming. Praise the name of Jesus. So that's the word. 
That's what the Lord is telling us. As the believer, he have given that, he come up down he give to give his life so that he can win us. He can bring us so that we can be like a spring. We can come back. The things will die. The, e the first things in us need to die. Like I say, when spring cannot come unless the things which is already there need to die. All the graves, all the things go down. And then it comes like everything's dying. And then the spring comes. The spring comes as a new life, as a new beginning. You see, you'll be you see new leaves, and it's not falling, it's just new and bright and clean and nice because it's a spring. It's a new thing coming up. That's how our life will be, and that's how we are in Christ. When the old man died, a new man comes life. So we need to know that our old men have died, and we are new people in Christ. We are new people in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we love Jesus because what he did for you. If you don't see that he did something for you, you have no reason to praise him. But if you know that he did something for your life, you will praise his name. Because you know that without him, I will be the way I am. I could be alive. We could be all dead. We could be all forgetted. And we could be all maybe in the hell. But Jesus did a great thing to make us to rejoice, to have peace that we have internal life. We are not going to die. Life, death has no power on us. We are living nature. We are living creatures. God has made us to live forever. As he was planted in the beginning that Adam could live forever in this earth with his children. Before the liar comes to lie his life, to put him in trouble, the plan of God, Adam and his children were living, were living forever. So that's why Jesus came for us to have back that life, for living forever and enjoy the blessing of God because he has chosen us to live forever, to enjoy the blessing that God has given us. To enjoy the good things that God has put in the store for us. To enjoy the, 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 the perfect gift we have. Even to preach. It's not you. It's God's gift God has given you. To sing. It's not you. It's just a gift. To have knowledge. It's not you. It's just God. To have wisdom. It's just not you. It's just God who has given you that gift of knowledge. So when you have all those things. You need to praise the Lord because you didn't get it by yourself. It's the Lord who has given you all this so that you can give him all the glory. And in the uh, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I, I will say rejoice. Paul is talking about the church in the Philippians and is telling them rejoice rejoice in the Lord and again I will say rejoice always we need to rejoice whether things are working good whether things are working bad and it's most worse we need to rejoice we need to rejoice in the Lord as our Paul was trying to encourage the church in Philippians, he said, you people, you need to know that we need to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, you need to rejoice. He repeats to say again, I want you to know to rejoice. So many people, as we have been seeing, when things going down, the joy comes out. They remain shrinking like now they are finished. But it's not for the believer. It's not for those who believe the Lord. We need to rejoice when even things are not good. We need to rejoice. Verse 5, it says, let, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is, is at hand. Be, 
be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. When we are rejoicing, like we have been rejoicing in praise and singing and jumping up and like young people is pleasing God. You know, when you are rejoicing, when you are giving your heart to your maker, you are saying, Lord, I'm here. I want to praise you. I want to lift your name up and you sing and you praise the Lord and you have joy every day. You need to rejoice every day in the Lord. And let us, our gentleness, be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. We are not anxious for nothing. Because we know the Lord. Sometimes we are missing something. Sometimes we are expecting some things. And most people are anxious all the time. All the time. Because they say, like, when is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? When am I going to get it? When am I going to get it? Pastor say last Sunday I will be blessed. When am I going to bless? When I will be blessed? You are already blessed. It's not when are you going. Don't be anxious for nothing. Because you have it already. When am I going to be healed? You are healed. If you don't know I'm healed, but the Lord has said you are already healed. When am I going to get this? You have already everything. So, will the Bible tells us, don't be anxious to anything, but in anything you think is just to pray and give thanks to God. I love how people, they are preparing for thanksgiving. I love that. Because people they are working hard, working hard, working hard, and, but they know there's a day of thanksgiving. But what I, what I want to put a challenge is, let not be one day you put for thank God. You need to be thanking God always. You need to be rejoicing always. So, in thanksgiving, people are going to spend a lot. A lot. People have, have a lot of plans, which is very good. But they need to be like that, always. Because the Lord wants us to be rejoicing always, 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 always in our life. So that we know that everything God has taken care of. That's what God's talking to us today. As he gave, as Isaiah was talking about the spring. And as I was encouraging us what God wants us to be. And we have seen that John also have tried to encourage us how God wants us to be. And now Paul in Philippians is still trying to encourage us that we need to rejoice in the Lord. We need to know that we are the special people. We need to know that we are the chosen ones. We know that God has spared much for us. We need to know that God has given much for us. We, know, we need to know that it's only one who has done all this for us. We cannot do nothing by ourselves unless the Lord permitted us. It's unless the Lord help us. So that's why we believe that God is in our side all the time. If God is not in our side, we have nothing. So we need to give Thanksgiving to the Lord. So that Thanksgiving, it will make our request to be known. Sometimes we pray so much, but we forget to give thanks to God. When we give just thanks to God, thank God, thank God, and God sees your heart is rejoicing in Him, giving thanks. When things are difficult, when things are hard, when things are complicated, you wake up in the morning. You say, thank you, Jesus. You praise. You, you jump up. You lift up the name of Jesus. You, you glorify his name. And you give him thanks for the day. You give him thanks for the food. You give him thanks for, for, for things you have. And things you don't have, you give all things thanks to God. Our God 
who is in heaven, he will see through your praise, through your thanksgiving, he will see your need. And what, what if God sees your need? God will come and answer your prayers. God will come and meet your needs. So when God see through our thanksgiving, as we thank him for what he has done already, God give us the rest. Praise the name of Jesus. So this is an exciting word and we see that God is in our side. I want to finish by verse 7. He said, And the peace of God which surprises all understanding will guide you, your heart and mind through Jesus through Christ Jesus. The peace of God, when you thank God, when you praise God, when you have joy in your heart, the peace of God, which surprise, which, which goes beyond the understanding of a human being. You know, people, when they see like, you, you are praising God, you are rejoicing, but things are not working, they see you are crazy. They see, what are you doing? You need to get up and do something. Why are you praising God? Why are you singing this morning? Things are not good for you. We have heard what's going on in your life. And why are you shouting? Why are you praising? Why are you thankful for the Lord? You need to be in a place you sit down in the, in the mud or in the, in the, in, in the ashes and, and do, show yourself that you are in need. They need to see you down. But the Bible says by praising God and giving him thanks, the peace of God will come in your heart. And it's a beyond understanding of all human beings. And it will cut, cut on your heart and, on, and cut your mind so that you just focus to Christ Jesus. And you will get everything the Lord have prepared for you. So today, I want just to bless you with that word and say, the word of God's life, you just believe what you hear and what God has spoken to you, that you need to rejoice and be happy and be glad in him. And you'll see the blessing of God running over and over and over in your life. You'll see things start working. If you know how to live the life of joy, if you know to live the life of thanksgiving, as you give God thanks, as you trust God, the peace of God, which is above everything, will, will just guide your heart and your mind. And you'll be peaceful. And when you are peace, you have everything. So God bless you. And I want just to pray for you. If you have not received the Lord, I give you this opportunity to give your life to God. Because without Jesus in your life, you cannot get anything from God. So you need to receive Jesus. It's everything. And I want to pray for you. You can pray with me this short prayer. Say, Lord God, I want to thank you for giving Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I want to ask you, Jesus, to come in my heart and save my sin. And I want to surrender my life to you. I want to be a newborn person. I want to live according to your promises. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. And I'm a newborn again. Amen. And if you have a need, I'm going to pray for your needs and say, God, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you have given us the mind of peace and the heart. We pray that God, everybody who have a need financially, who have a need of healing, who have a need of any, anything going on in their life, I believe that Jesus, you are touching that area of the need right now in the name of Jesus. Because God, you have promises that you will give the peace of mind when you are going to heal them, when you are going to bless them financially, when you are giving them the needs they need. Father God, the peace of mind will be in their life and they will give you glory. They will rejoice. They will praise your name. Thank you, Jesus, for helping us. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us. Thank you, Jesus, for touching our life. 
as I pray, I believe it's already done because you have already paid the price of everything in the cross, every disease, every, every iniquity, every abomination, every trouble, every storm in the life, you have paid the price once and for all. And I think that we are receiving your blessing this day in the name of Jesus as we pray. Amen.